Pakistan is facing one of the worst, if not the worst, economic crisis today. The ongoing economic crisis, called the 2022-23 Pakistani economic crisis, is currently troubling Pakistan. The continuous economic crisis from 2022 to 2023 is mixed with political unrest. That the former Prime Minister Imran Khan has been arrested. Its persisting impact has led to prolonged economic difficulties, resulting in significant price spikes for food, gas, and oil. The global surge in fuel prices ensued after the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Pakistan prolonged excessive external borrowings, heightening the looming threat of default, leading to currency devaluation and increased relative expenses for imports. Inflation peaked at an all-time high by June of 2022, accompanied by a noticeable escalation in food prices. Bad governance and low individual productivity, when compared to other similar developing countries, have led to a financial crisis. This crisis means Pakistan can't make enough money from abroad to pay for all the things it buys from other countries. This economic situation is the most severe one Pakistan has faced since gaining independence. As per Indian strategic affairs specialist Shushant Sarin, Pakistan's national debt has doubled approximately every five years over the past 25 years. This means the money Pakistan owes went from about 3.06 trillion rubles, or 11 billion US dollars, when General Musharraf was in charge from 1999, to around 62.5 rubles, or 220 billion US dollars, by the end of Imran Khan's government in 2022. As the debt increased by about 14% each year on average, the country's GDP was growing at only 3% per year on average. This created a huge problem, because Pakistan owed too much money compared to what it was making. By the fiscal year 2022-23, the money used to pay off this debt, around 5.2 trillion rubles, was more than all the money the federal government earned. In 2022, Pakistan faced a trio of challenges political unrest, an economic crisis, and devastating floods that hit the nation hard. This led to severe inflation, a weakening currency, and dangerously low foreign reserves, making the country's financial stability a major concern. In 2022, there was a significant disagreement between Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif and the former leader Imran Khan in Pakistan. The clash mainly revolved around Pakistan's economic problems. It got so bad, the Khan was removed from his position in April of 2022. Sharif blamed Khan for handling the economy and foreign policies poorly, which pushed him to resign after a vote of no confidence. After being removed from power, he sparked a movement called Haki'i Azadi, or Real Independence. This movement aimed at freeing the country from foreign influences after gaining independence from the British Empire in 1947. It stirred up nationwide protests, demanding early elections and more power for civilians. This added more fuel to the already troubled economy. Back in 2019, Imran Khan attempted to strike a deal with the IMF, agreeing to certain terms and conditions. This move led to increased inflation, but ultimately, Khan couldn't secure the IMF loan. During a news conference on May 19, 2022, Information Minister Mariam Aurangzeb stated that Pakistan was dedicated to tackling the increasing prices of goods, stabilizing the foreign money it had, making the economy stronger, and decreasing how much stuff the country buys from other places. They stopped importing things that weren't needed or were luxurious. Sharif supported this move, saying it would save the country's important foreign money and Pakistan needed to be more careful with spending. In late May 2022, the government allowed fuel prices to go up, which was needed to move forward with a deal with the International Monetary Fund (IMF). The IMF also wanted Islamabad to increase electricity prices, collect more taxes, and make big cuts in its budget. On May 14, 2022, Federal Minister Ashan Iqbal suggested that Pakistanis should cut down to just one or two cups of tea a day because importing tea was costing the government a lot of money. He mentioned that the tea imported is bought on credit and suggested shutting down businesses to save on electricity. Pakistan, with a population of 231 million, is the biggest buyer of tea globally, spending over $640 million on tea in 2020. In June, prices went up a lot in Pakistan, reaching 21.3% the highest since December 2008, when it was 23.3%. Finance Minister Mifta Ismail mentioned that in late June, a loan of $2.3 billion from a group of Chinese banks was deposited into Pakistan's central bank account. 
During the summer of 2022, floods in Pakistan resulted in more than $30 billion in economic losses for the country. By the end of March 2022, the State Bank of Pakistan had reserves of $11.425 billion. However, these reserves dropped over time and hit a nearly four-year low of $6.715 billion on December 2nd. Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves are now only enough to cover about five weeks of what the country buys from other nations. The value of the rupee, dropping all the time, is making the economic crisis worse. Back in March, $1 was equal to 183.48 rupees. But by December 9th, it had gone up to 224.40 rupees for $1. In January 2023, Muhammad Aurangzeb, the CEO of Pakistan's biggest bank, Habib Bank, warned that if the right decisions weren't made quickly by everyone involved, the current economic situation could seriously harm the economy. In late January, Pakistan removed the limit on its currency value, which made the rupee drop by 20% compared to the dollar in just a few days. The government also increased the price of fuel by 16%. Additionally, 100 basis points was added to its interest rate by the Pakistani Central Bank to tackle the country's extremely high inflation expected to reach as much as 26% in January. In February 2023, an economist from Moody's forecasted that inflation in Pakistan might average around 33% during the first half of 2023. To strengthen its foreign exchange reserves, China lent Pakistan an additional $700 million. Pakistan's Consumer Price Index CPI, climbed even higher to 31.5%, marking the highest annual rate in 50 years. Furthermore, Fitch downgraded Pakistan's sovereign credit rating from CCC plus to CCC minus. The ratings agency from New York cautioned that the chance of a default happening could be very real. In March 2023, the cost of food went way up in Pakistan. In cities, prices jumped by 47.1%, while in rural areas, they went up a bit more, reaching 50.2%. Moody's lowered Pakistan's rating to CAA3, and switched the outlook from negative to stable. Finance Minister Ashad Dar mentioned that China agreed to extend a $1.3 billion loan for Pakistan, which would help boost its decreasing foreign exchange reserves. The World Bank found that food prices in Pakistan went up by 45.1% compared to the previous year, which was the second highest increase in South Asia following Sri Lanka. The overall cost of things people buy, the CPI, shot up to 35.4%, marking the highest yearly increase ever. This surge was mostly because prices for food, electricity, drinks, and transportation soared. According to research firm Arif Habib LTD, this inflation rate was the highest since they began keeping records in July 1965, and they predict it might keep rising in the coming months. On April 4th, the World Bank estimated that around 4 million people in Pakistan would end up earning less than $3.60 a day, which is considered the lower middle-income poverty line. This prediction came as the country's economic growth dropped drastically to only 0.4%, falling well far short of the expected target of 5%. In May 2023, Pakistan's inflation rate hit 38%, making it the country with the highest inflation in Asia, overtaking Sri Lanka. In June 2023, the Pakistani government introduced an economic revival plan. This plan focuses on investing in important areas like farming, mining, information technology, defense, and energy. PM Shabazz Sharif praised China for helping Pakistan during the ongoing economic crisis. On June 10, 2022, the government revealed a new budget of $47 billion for 2022-23. This was done to convince the IMF to continue a $6 billion bailout deal that both sides had agreed upon back in 2019. Unfortunately, the IMF wasn't happy with the budget for 2023-24 that Pakistan submitted just before the bailout deal expired. This indicated that Pakistan might not get the bailout money as expected. In October 2022, the All-Pakistan Textile Mills Association APTMA, shared that 1,600 clothing mills shut down in the country because the government removed power subsidies. This closure led to 5 million job losses. By December 2022, APTMA mentioned that mills all over the country were operating at less than half their capacity, and they feared textile exports might drop even more starting in 2023. Several major companies listed on the Pakistan Stock Exchange decided to close their plants. Car manufacturers like Pak Suzuki Motors, 
Toyota Indus, and Honda Atlas cars had to shut down their assembly plants because they couldn't get the necessary letters of credit due to government restrictions on foreign exchange. Other well-known companies, including Malat Tractors, Godhara Tire and Rubber Company, Nishat Chunyan, and Faji Fertilizer Ben Kasim also closed their factories due to low demand and tough economic conditions. A lack of enough foreign money and the drop in the value of the Pakistani rupee made it hard to buy crude oil from other countries. Because of this, Pakistan's biggest oil refinery, Synergy Eco, had to close temporarily in February 2023. Problems in getting the necessary paperwork caused ships carrying pharmaceutical ingredients, medicines, and medical equipment from other countries to get stuck at seaports for a long time. Because of this, many pharmaceutical companies had to close because it became too expensive to make their products. As a result, there was a shortage of medicines and equipment all over the country, leading hospitals to delay surgeries and treatments. In April 2023, nearly all of the 30 factories in Pakistan that assemble mobile phones, including three operated by foreign companies, closed down. This situation puts the jobs of around 20,000 employees in jeopardy. In June 2023, Shell PLC said it would leave the Pakistani market by selling off all its shares in Shell Pakistan, which amounted to 77.42% of the company. Chinese officials pointed fingers at the West for Pakistan's financial troubles. Meanwhile, state media in China highlighted the positives of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Li Qingbin, a senior researcher at the China Digital Economy Institute, mentioned that China provided a comprehensive plan for Pakistan. He suggested that while China offered help, Pakistan shouldn't rely solely on China and should strive for self-sufficiency. The U.S. is really worried about the money Pakistan owes to China. Derek Chale from the U.S. State Department talked about these concerns during his visit to Islamabad on February 15, 2023 because the Gulf Arab states that usually helped Pakistan financially are no longer willing to do so, experts believe Pakistan might have to turn to China for more loans to support its economy. Pakistan will really need to step up their game and start rebuilding their economy in order to meet the requirements of its nation and citizens. I hope you've enjoyed this content so far. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on videos just like this. We'll see you in the next one.